Tonight we're going to talk about the Win Portable Spindle Sander. I mentioned a couple days ago on the blog that I had purchased this Win Portable Spindle Sander. Uh, I have a spindle sander, I have a desktop spindle sander, but when I saw this portable one, it looked pretty interesting, so I thought I'd uh, pick it up because it's really priced pretty well too if it's any good because it's only $55 and that was on Amazon. I'll put a link, uh, the Amazon link in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, got it in two days as a Prime member and brought it out in the garage, took it out of the box. It does come uh, well packaged, comes in a box like this. And um, when I got it out, the first thing I noticed was it's pretty heavy. So using it as a portable, uh, depending on how you use it, it might, might add uh, a little bit of stress to your hand. Uh, I think the way it's intended to be used is they actually give you an edge guide uh, that you attach to it that is different from a desktop uh, spindle sander. And this edge guide goes right here and you can adjust it back and forth to uh, set the depth that the, uh, the sand drum is going to sand into the wood. So you could actually turn this thing up, what I'm calling upside down, but this is actually upside down right now. If you turn it right side up, uh, then this spindle points down and you could run it along the edge of a table if you needed to sand the edge or something like that. So I don't know how often I would use it for something like that, but I guess uh, it's nice to have that ability if you need it. It came with uh, four spindles and these spindles are probably, I don't know if they're three, three and a half inches, but they're, they're smaller than the normal spindles I'm used to seeing. So I'll have to order some of these uh, off of Amazon too to have some extra. They are pretty high quality. Again, when I got it out of the box, I realized it was pretty heavy and it does feel like it's constructed pretty well, so I was impressed with that. And I've been pretty impressed with these wind tools uh, all along, the different tools I've purchased. Uh, for low-priced tools, they're actually built pretty well, so that's been uh, good to see. It does come with a dust port. I think it's like that uh, one and a half inch dust port, so you'll probably need an adapter from your shop back, unless you've got a small shop back. It, like I said, it comes with that edge guide. It also comes with these clamps to clamp it to your table. And I'll show you that in a second. And that's how I will probably normally use it. It's just as a bench top, uh, just connected to my workbench. And I'll show you how that goes on in just a minute. If you're not going to use the WIN in its portable mode, which would be like this, then I think a lot of people are going to end up using it uh, as a desktop replacement because it's so inexpensive. So to do that, they give you <clears throat> excuse me, this little rubber pad, and you put that down on your bench, set the wind portable spindle sander on there, then you take these clamps that they provide, slide them into these holes here and here, and then when we tighten down these wing nuts, it's actually pretty secure. I was impressed with the how well it stayed clamped down. Let's get this one tight. I'm not sure I would over tighten these wing nuts. Everything feels pretty well built, but these are just plastic pieces down here. I feel confident you could snap them if you tried hard enough. But once you get it on there, it's actually mounted pretty well. A couple of neat things about this is it does come variable speed, which is something my desktop uh, spindle sander doesn't have. It's got the on-off switch right here and the variable speed right here. Um, it goes from Z1 up to, I think it was 9, yeah, 1 up to 9. And to be honest with you, um, most of the time I think I'm going to be using it on the lower speeds, uh, probably between a 1 and a 3. So let me grab some wood here and I'll show you what it can do. Let me talk just a minute about what a spindle sander is used for. It, I call it a correction tool or an error eraser uh, because a lot of times when you're cutting something on the bandsaw or even on the scroll saw, you might cut outside the line and to actually tweak it down to where you want it, you can use the sander to slowly sneak up on the line. Uh, that's probably one of its, mo one of its most common uses. Uh, another thing I use a spind spindle sander for in my scroll saw work is if I've made a box and I need all the pieces on the edges flushed up, I'll use my spindle sander 
And the reason I do is because a spindle sander not only turns, it also moves up and down. And what that does is it helps eliminate the sanding marks that you would normally see on like a disc sander. Uh, so it gives you a cleaner finish. So I've drawn a little line right here on this wood right here on the corner. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. Uh, but let's say we cut this piece out, but we wanted this corner rounded to that line. Uh, that's what we can use a spindle sander for. So I'm going to turn this on. It's going to get too loud for you to hear. I may even uh, kill the audio here when I edit the video. But here's what it can do. Now obviously I don't have the dust collection turned on so it's making a pretty good mess. But uh, with the dust collection on, it does what I'll call average dust collection. It doesn't get rid of all of it, uh, but it does do a decent job. And again, I can sand it down to the line. I intentionally left a little bit too much wood there and uh, so I was pushing pretty hard to remove a lot of wood. And one thing you'll notice is the sleeve started to slip up just a little bit and that will happen if you push too hard. If you tighten this knob down, it expands the rubber drum and makes this sleeve on here tighter. So sometimes you can tighten it down a little bit more and prevent it from walking up. Uh, but in general, it's not too big of a problem. When I got this thing out of the box, the first thing I thought about was how small this table is. And I was considering building a box or just a separate platform uh, to mount on this table to give me more space. But to be honest with you, after using it a little while, I'm not sure it really needs it. This table. You know, it's flat. This piece is fairly sturdy once it's mounted, and uh, I'm not sure I'm going to need to add an extra table to it. I'll use it for a while and then make up my mind from there. Uh, but all in all, for $55, you know, even the inexpensive uh, desktop spindle sanders or workbench spindle sanders, you know, are well over $100. So this is half the price, and from what I can see, it's doing a pretty good job. Uh, the spindles are a little bit short, so it's going to be basically for smaller jobs. Uh, I think on my uh, uh, workbench spindle sander, I think the, I think the uh, spindles are either 5 or 6 inches tall. So they're about this much taller uh, than the spindles here. So that's a little bit of an issue. But again, if you're a scroll sawler and you're not doing furniture type work, uh, this will probably be more than sufficient. Okay, that's all I got for you tonight. I just wanted to show you this little tool. Um, I think my first impression, just having had it for a day, is that it's well built. I'm impressed with the build quality. Uh, it seems to have plenty of power, even with three quarter inch uh, thick wood. I wasn't able to stall the spindle out, and I pushed pretty hard a couple times just to try. Uh, the variable speed is interesting. I'm not sure when you turn this thing up high. I mean, it really, it really spins, so I'm not sure how useful the variable speed is, but hey, it's nice to have. Um, let's see, the price. The price, like I said, was $54.99 when I purchased it on Amazon, so I think that's a pretty, pretty interesting price for a tool uh, that is as useful as a spindle sander. Possible to build a box to put it in or to add an external table. That might be kind of cool. And again, it does come with this edge guide that mounts right here. And I'm going to have to play with that a little bit to figure out how useful that is. I'm trying to make up my mind how close you could turn it into a jointer. Uh, if you were possibly able to uh, put a shim on the inboard end, uh, you might be able to make a jointer out of it. But I have to play with it to figure that out. Okay, that's all I got for you. I'm Steve Good. Thanks for being here with me at Scroll Saw Workshop. Catch you next time.